What a pleasure to have as our special guest tonight. Finally, Jim Carrey, ten movies in five years. And he's, he's searching for something. Jim Carrey is our guest. I lost guest. the clicker. He star... You, you see the clicker? <laughs> He stars in Man on the Moon. I saw the movie this morning. It's a terrific life of uh, an extraordinary guy, Andy Kaufman, directed by Miles Foreman, and it opens a week from today. We tape this earlier for play tonight. Thank you for finally coming. I'm to so Larry glad King. to be what with you. What took you so long? Uh, gee, I was scared. Huh. You so were, weren't you? Yeah, I hear, I hear you're pretty rough. No, but you yeah. said to me once, I don't like to sit down for long interviews. <laughs> Why? Well, well, you might find out who I really am, and then it'll all be over. And That's the dream, anyway. People who make people laugh don't want people to know that, right? Uh, well, you know, I think people that make people laugh are actually kind of shy. I know you. it's hard to believe that, but... Uh, well, it's you know, Most it, comics are. It re they really are. They kind of, uh, they overcompensate because if they actually get serious for a second, they blubber. <laughs> it comes out. It's true. It's always right there, you know? And so, I mean, it, it, I find it, you know, if it's, somebody asks me to make a serious toast, or anything, I rarely can get through it. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm, I'm <laughs> no, that, that need you have to be funny. Uh, it, it takes a, over. It's a good little function that you go into, and, and uh, it, it compensates for that. Yeah, sure. We've got time to discuss the life and times. But first, a little bit to begin with, and then later at the end about this film. Why did you want to do this movie? Well, Andy Kaufman is kind of like the patron saint of comedians, and and uh, <clears throat> you know, growing up in the comedy comedians, world, right? Right, sure. Anybody who wants to do something different has to go to Andy Kaufman first. You know, uh, has to look at that because that's uh, uh, a car wreck as well as uh, just something that's beautiful and sublime. So and when they came to you with it, th there were other people they were looking at too. I heard that sure, Milos like, like you, right? Yeah, he's going to get upset if you keep calling him Milos, though. Why? Milos? Milos. Yeah, it's, Milos. it's okay. That's right. You know, that's, I'm very close with the Czechs. Reads like Milos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, it, he couldn't get more upset than he was at me, so it's, it's okay. Uh, it was it was a, an amazing process. I would get calls from him on the weekend and stuff like that. While you were filming? Sure, and he'd say, uh, I don't know how to talk to this man. <laughs> and he's out of control. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And uh, I was scared at first, but then he wouldn't, he, 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 he didn't have the heart to stop me. But he selected you over others, right? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, it was a, a process of auditioning on tape, and, uh, you know, I got a lot of people who said, no, don't do it, man, it's dangerous, man. You know, like that, you'll be a star. <laughs> to blow it all, like that. How did and I was right in there. Vivo <laughs> Las Vegas. <laughs> how did you get, and we'll be showing clips, obviously, how did you get that look to look so uncannily like him? Because you don't look like him. You don't look it's like just, him. It's just what's inside. No, I'm waiting you know? to find it. Um, I don't thinking. know about the uh, the look. Just kind of evolved, and we tried things. You know, I, the first day of shooting, they put this big nose on me and stuff, and tried to give me Andy's nose, and it totally destroyed the look because the rest of my face is structured differently and stuff. So I, I gained 15 pounds, make my face round, and uh, still haven't lost the ass. How about those? Uh, <laughs> how about those eyes? Um, what Andy would do? It's just with a feeling. It's a feeling. You know, really? Yeah, it really is. Andy, Andy was mostly about uh, the feeling of wonder and the feeling of uh, that there's, he has some kind of weird little surprise that he has that you can't see because you couldn't possibly handle it. You know, that kind of thing. So it's that kind of, you know, should I show you? So, so it really, what you're doing is taking it from within. And when you do it right. well enough, you it begin happens. to look like it. Right. All right. Is it difficult to play someone that we've seen, as opposed to the Truman Show, a character who you're inventing. Right. This is not this Andy Kaufman we know. Well, there's a lot of material and things like that. The, the, the hardest part about it was that there are a heck of a lot of people that are still living that know, knew him really very well and, and uh, to whom it's incredibly important that he's portrayed in the right way. And that was the hardest part about it, is, uh, is not trying to please them, but trying to... Uh, do it try, right. Trying to do it right and, and make sure that... Uh, that uh, you don't destroy the legacy, you know? And uh, that was a lot of pressure. Is uh, his it father told me, you know, one of the main concerns was that you know, people didn't understand. They just thought, you know, he's doing wrestling women. And it, what he was most concerned, and the family was most concerned about, is that, is that Andy was shown for who he was, which is a person who had this childlike wonder and, uh, and really didn't come at it in a, in a nasty way as much as he just didn't understand why people should get so upset 
because he's just playing a role. Is it a thin line, Jim, to play some? We talked to Jack Lemon about this, playing someone who Quit bragging. we know. Not bragging, he was on the show. <laughs> the name. Hey, you want more? I'll throw Man, more at you. Sick, well, we asked Brando once, and then Sinatra <laughs> yeah. said to me. Yeah, right. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he kissed you. Is it? He did. Is it yeah. a... Don't. How was it, by the way? Don't. <laughs> I can't stop bad. talking about it. <laughs> is, it <a> thin <laughs> is it a thin line between playing something and impersonating? In other words, were you playing Andy Kaufman, being Andy Kaufman, or having seen him impersonating him? Uh, it really wasn't, uh, it wasn't impersonating because you're, you're kind of, you're coming from a kernel that's inside of a person. It's not like, okay, physically I'm going to get this together. That, that comes later, but it was initially, what's this guy about? What is the essence that you want to, uh, zero in on? And, and, uh, and those are the best kind of impressions, if you want to call them. It's, it's, it's the ones that come from, you know, I, I walked out of, you know, on Golden Pond when I first saw it, and I was doing the face, but I, I didn't know it. I was just repeating lines from the movie, but it, because of the feeling was so strong, and what Henry Fonda did in that movie was so strong, it just happened, you know, and that's the best kind. Do you have to like the character you're playing? You have to have, uh, uh, you have to understand and have compassion for him, sure. No matter think, who it is, right? Yeah, I don't think it'd be possible to play a character and you go, well, this guy's a jerk. You know, because then it's, it's so you have to. So even if you're playing evil, mm -hmm. you have you to understand have to. that this person was a baby at one time who uh, you know didn't receive the proper love or whatever it is. Doesn't look in the mirror and say I'm evil. Right? No, no. He said, you know, or or else if if he does sense that he's evil, he's he's kind of like trying to like just ignore it. To someone who had never seen Andy Kaufman or only knew him from Taxi, which mm -hmm. is where most of the world knew him mostly mm -hmm. from that great, maybe the best sitcom ever done. Right. right? And was his least favorite work. Right, least favorite. That yeah. comes through in the film, but, but it was hysterical, well written. Sure, absolutely. And he played it. He was amazing. Perfect. He was amazing. But did not, or didn't uh, rehearse and, you know, didn't want to be there, basically. Meditated for an hour. Right, for exactly. Show. Yeah. You, a good idea told that. me they'd, they'd go looking for him, you know, show day and stuff. <laughs> and he was in, in his Cordoba on the lot somewhere. He'd parked somewhere. Also, a good idea to have the real characters. Judd Hirsch is in oh, there. Oh, absolutely. That was Lou great. Henner. That was great. Yeah. That was yeah. a great idea to have them. Uh, yeah, and they were driven a little crazy. You know, Andy Andy was tough to deal with. So oh, he was. Oh, yeah. So he, you know, he played, you know, Tony Clifton, when Tony Clifton was there, played his, he called it sharing his music his with singing. the rest of the people in the in the makeup trailer. But really what it was was blasting them out of their seats uh, with the, the Chipmunks uh, Christmas song <laughs> 60 times in a row. You know, kind of just to keep them, you know, on edge a little bit. We'll ask about similarities between them. Carrie in this character. Jim Carrey, he's brilliant, by the way, in Man on the Moon. We'll be right back. We're back. What are you doing? What I'm are you fixing this place up. What a dumb. Do you dump. have to be silly? Is that it? Do you no. have to be? Is that it? I'm just filling time. Are you still a little boy? They're going... Mm, are you still a little boy? Mm. You're still a little boy, aren't you, Jim? Little uh, Jim is still a little trouble. You know, it's sick. I'm trying to be... I'm a late bloomer, man. I don't even have hair yet. What do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have a little bit on the side. I comb it over. <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> Who influenced you? Did you have an influence? You know, I was a big, huge Dick Van Dyke fan when I was growing up. I loved the He's Dick Van be with Dyke. Us. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, with, with Mary so Tyler. All right, what did he do? He had an essence of He was comedy. a guy who did over-the-top comedy, who did, you know, did the, did the clowning calls. thing, but put it in a real context, and you believed the character, and, and uh, that, was, that was his genius. He was able to do that, you know? And, uh, and you know, I, I like people like that that can, be, that can do that, what's not conventional. When did Jim Carrey know he wanted to do what he's doing? Forever. You knew it as, as Andy Kaufman knew it when he was Tiny, five. Exactly like You Andy. knew it then? I was in my room, too. I was, I was really? shut in my room. All the other kids are out playing and doing whatever, and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, get Johnny Mathis' impression down or whatever. You know, uh, it was, for me, it was all about when are we going to have company again, and uh, will I have the show ready to go? And you were very poor, right? I mean, this was a poor household you were in. Uh, initially, we were kind of lower middle class, and then we went in the dumper. You know, <laughs> so it was worse because I knew the other, you know, you all worked. The whole family had yeah. to go to work. Yeah. lived in trailers, yeah. etc. Yeah. Did you invent imaginary characters then to get out of this? In I did sense? that. I did a lot of, you know, pranks and things like that. I tried to start race riots in the factory. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> I would like, you know, put, uh, you know, coveralls in and, 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 uh, 
and uh, work boots in a precarious situation in, in inside a cubicle, and you know, and and uh, they call everybody maker. in. Hey, look at this, man. You, you know, like they trouble. they blame each other. You know, it's like it's two black guys. Man. You know, that kind of. You, know, you like making trouble. Uh, it's yeah, fun did. sometimes, sure, sure. Hitting one against the other. Well, I was so angry at that time. I was at, like, you know, at, at the world for not, you know, for, for my father not working and things like that. Of course, the world was responsible. And, and I, you know, I thought of uh, a lot of ways to kind of vent that anger. And that was, you know, kind of... Were you an Andy Kaufman fan? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. I loved Andy Kaufman. I saw him, the first time I ever saw him was on, uh, on the Dick Van Dyke Variety Show, and uh, he did Foreign Man, and I just loved the fact that he came in with, uh, you know, uh, with his character of uh, the guy that didn't really understand what a joke was about, and so he'd leave the punchline off, you know, and I, <laughs> I'm like going, well, this is great, this is so... He was maybe the prime risk-taker, right? Yeah. I mean, he didn't even look at it as risk-taking. Yeah. Do you he think you're a risk-taker? I think so. I think so. I, I don't think I've gotten safe, you know. You take chances. Sure. Absolutely. It's, you know, basically all we got is right now. This is it. Correct. It's kind of sad, isn't it, man? No. <laughs> yeah, you, no. it, yeah. <laughs> you and me in a desert island. Oh, that's it. man. But, um, but, you know, so, yeah, this is what it's about. It's not about, you know, like uh, someday down the road I'm going to have a big house and this and that. And the first time I ever got a big payday was Dumb and Dumber and... And uh, what was that I mean, like? It was wonderful, but at the same time, it scared me. And I, and I, and I thought to myself, gosh, that's, you know, it's so much money, and you know, they're going to be expecting me to be this kind of uh, uh, the, the sort of star leading man thing. And so the first thing I do, did was took my Bic lighter and whacked my tooth out, <laughs> and wh whacked my bonding out, and had them put a bowl cut on my head. I wanted to be as ugly as I possibly could be. So, you know, yeah, I kind of what was it like to see a there. huge check? For the first time when you when you were a poor kid you know the weirdest thing is that i uh i have never worried about money never ever and so i it's just not it's not it never no been maybe it's because i went there and i lived that way and realized that you know uh you know we lived on the road in a van for a while after we were in the worst jobs of our lives and we were making money and we decided to quit because we were turning into monsters we lived in a van and we're happier than we had ever been you know, and, and I guess that taught me that, that uh, you know, to trust the universe, you know, and uh, I so it used to drive out. people crazy. My, you know, my first wife would go crazy because she's, you know, we, we don't have a check. We, you know, where's the rent coming from? And I just never worried about it, ever. So it always came, and it, and it just keeps coming, and it's ridiculous. <laughs> Talk about that in a minute. <laughs> we'll be right back with the brilliant Jim Carrey. He didn't get nominated for the Truman Show, which was robbery in a sense. Bitter. So very bitter. I know. We'll bring Ooh. that out. But he's going to get nominated for this. I guarantee <laughs> it. We'll be right back. How did Jim Carrey... Well, you know how to make a guy relax. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Stop. No, kid. Go any way you like, Jim. Okay. All right. How did uh, In Loving Living Color come about? That no. was your break, right? That was the porno version, In Loving oh. Color. <laughs> right. There's a pretty much a porno version of everything. <laughs> How'd you get this? It's called uh, the Larry King size show. I is, I think it's, uh... <laughs> Where did they find you? How did they find you for that? Uh, well, uh, I have, uh, I wear a sweater and I go to this ice cream uh, fountain every once in a while and really show it off, you know. Now, um, it's a Lana Turner kind of, who Traps. was that, by the way? Lana Turner. Discuss. Was it Lana Turner? Yeah, right here. Gosh, I have Swaps. knowledge beyond my years. <laughs> um, she was famous. She was in the Was she? Yeah, she was in the newspaper. But look at it now. Yeah. It uh, just goes to show you. Easy come. This is not going to matter. Good. What are we doing? Let's go to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> you got a point. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's just, oh, well. Just a speck of sand. How did they find you? We're in Loving Color. Um, well, I, I knew Damon Wayans from the clubs, from, from the comedy clubs. You worked in clubs? Yeah, yeah. I, was, I, I did about 15 years in the comedy clubs, and, uh, which is a PhD of some kind. And, uh, years. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that was, that was a great ride, I think. I had a great time. But um, I met Damon there, and he asked me to come and audition for it. And uh, there were like, you know, 500 people in a hallway, you know, everybody, all these desperate lunatics in the hallway just waiting to, to go in there. And uh, the first thing I did when I went in was uh, uh, I had to make some hard character choices. So I played everything as Nipsey Russell. <laughs> <laughs> Which won't mean anything to the audience. <laughs> yes, <No>. it will. Okay. 
<laughs> what was it like being uh, the, the only Caucasian well, on the, a show? The funny thing was is that that was the thing when we first started, you know, I had so many people come up to me and say, man, you're going to be the white Garrett Morris and all this, you know, and, 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 and I just, they were incredibly fair and incredibly, you know, everybody got made fun of and everybody got their chance to shine and, you know, I was, I was desperate. I mean, I was, I was crazed and Damon really, you know, took me in there and said, this is what you're going to have to do. You know, you're going to have to write, you're going to have to really get after it to did. get on this show, to get in there, and I did, so. And that show took no prisoners, right? That was None. ahead of its time. Oh, half the time when I did a sketch, I felt like, you know, I, I, I said prayers on the way home, you know, because I <laughs> felt like I was going to hell. You know, Fire Marshal Bill, the first time that, it, that was ever done. Yeah, tell me. Well, I everybody thought it was makeup, first of all. I could only <laughs> do it a minute at a time, because it's like. <laughs> I see some violations. <laughs> That's how fast you could go up like a table box. You know, but uh, it, it, was, it's incre it gets sore, you know. <laughs> so you get a minute with that, and then it's, oh, oh. you know. But uh, I went home, the first time I ever did that sketch, I went home going, oh, that's, that's my ticket. That's my ticket right Out there. of that, did you get the movie offer? What, did that take you to Hollywood? Well, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, I mean, about the third comedy. year of, of In Living Color, I started being Jim Carrey instead of the white guy. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that's when I got the opportunity. But all those years of comedy clubs, which means you did monology, right? You sure. got up and told stories. Well, I did impressions at, at, at the yeah, beginning. Mostly impressions. I did, I did the whiz-bang uh, Vegas impressionist act of the you century. You were a stand-up. Right. You'd never acted. Mm-mm. So in living color. Well, right. I'd done a couple of little things here and there, but nothing of no. You were not known as a sketch comic. No, right? no, okay. no, no, not They'd at take all. Take you to Hollywood. Or a character guy. I, I, I hadn't created characters. I desperately went into character mode when I got that show. You know, and the first I, I just movie was The Mask. Out of nowhere. Uh, no, that or was Ace uh, Ventura. Well, I'd done a couple other movies, but the first one after In Living Color was Ace Ventura, and and uh, that was great because that was. Uh, that was a chance for me. They gave me this script, and it wasn't very good, and, and, it, and, and I just said, okay, I want to totally rewrite it, but if it sucks at the end of it, I don't want to have to do it. You know, so I kind of had the trap door, and I just had so much fun writing it. And, Did and you have any idea that that would become what it became, almost like a franchise? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the problem with that whole thing, <laughs> the franchise Why? thing. I, I just don't like to do things over. I know, but did yeah. you, so you had no idea it would hit, though. Uh, well, when we were doing it, it, it was yeah. the kind of thing where, where me and Tom Shadiak would sit around and go, this is hilarious, man. This is funny stuff. It's like making us laugh. Did, does it bother you when the sound guy? Yeah, it's probably good. Okay. You right. burst in the air, but okay. okay. It'll be in the tabloids next week. <laughs> Carry broken Blood, air. trickle. <laughs> Uh, Barry killed engineer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we would sit around every night going, this is either going to be the end of us <laughs> or the funniest thing ever in a cult classic, you know? Yeah, that's what it became. It, it, that was the feeling. It was, it was total destruction or total popularity. And you did a follow-up to it. Yes, I did. Although you that's, that's the, the only, only sequel I've done, right? done, and I didn't enjoy it. Because? Because I was imitating myself. The character's already been created, and that was a moment, just like we were talking about, moment to moment. But you don't know? the suits say, Jim, this is money? Yeah, exactly, but that's not, uh, that's not reason enough, you know? I and that's what it comes off as, I believe. Yeah. Jim carries the guest. We'll be right back. The movie is Man on the Moon. He plays Andy Kaufman. It's terrific. Oh, everybody in it is terrific. It's uncanny. Tell him, just say we'll be right back. Oh, good headache, no. We're back with Jim Carrey. Do you, is movie making it now? I mean, you're, you're one of the highest paid people out here. You, you were the first one to get a $20 million movie, right? That's what they say. Wow. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. I think Stallone tried to rip it off, you know. He went out there and... <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna eat him. You don't do it for money, but that's the way to keep score, though, right? I mean, you had uh, to feel good. Well, you know, what that means is that you're in the top thing, and that's important, I guess. But, uh, no, I have guys that that's all they think about. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't live in that we world. We this today, and this right, is a exactly. here, I, and this is I, a write-off. I don't live in that world, you know, and I don't so live in the world of, like, well, we got to double it next time kind of so thing. So you don't do it for money? No way. No Would way. you, therefore, do something... Would you do a Broadway show for less? Clean your car. <laughs> Would you clean my car? Absolutely. Okay. Would you do a comedy act again? Uh, sure. Would you do a concert? Not out of the question. Yeah. Yeah. Anything is possible. It just depends on uh, whether I get bored with where I'm at. 
You know, it, it really comes down to that. It's just... Uh, Do you think back a lot to the early days? Do you ever... Th you know, I mean, are you the kind of guy who thinks, I lived in a trailer? Nah. You know? No, no I, I, it, it was all good life, you know? It was, it was okay. You know, I had some great times in that trailer, or in, not in the, uh, in the van. You know, I, I don't... Uh, you don't I don't even on. like to. No, absolutely not. And I, and I, as I said, I don't think about it. I never have. But I've you always bring it thought about your, what can I do that's creative. You bring it to your comedy, though, don't we? Bring all our experiences. Oh, sure, we do. sure. Although, you know, as I said, the anger towards the world about my father and things like that, those are things that have to be dealt with in some way. And you either become you know, the shooter or you become uh, somebody who's creative and funny or whatever. Maybe you know. the most difficult thing is selection, right? Pick, what do you pick to do? Uh, What's your guiding... Do you have a principle? You say, you get a script. Yeah. What are you looking for? Is it short? <laughs> easy to read? <laughs> do uh, I understand? Can I get it on tape? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, what, what, what is it? What does it say? I just look for something that's different and creative. Or, or uh, you know, if it's, if it's balls out funny. Even if it's not uh, high comedy. If it's... If it's if it's not apologizing, if, uh, if it's a great director that I've never worked with before, uh, you know, there's so many factors that come into it. Do you have to be the star? Uh, no, that's not entirely necessary, no. So in other words, if you got a script where you were like fourth star, mm -hmm. and you loved it, and the director yeah. you wanted to work with, right. you yeah, would say I'd yes. Yeah, i do that, sure, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Good to hear. Yeah. Who's the director you'd like to work with? Oh, there's, there's a lot. Scorsese, you know, I mean, I'd love to work with these guys, you know, uh, I can't Woody? wait to bash somebody's brains in with a baseball bat. <laughs> no. Woody? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, that'd be great, too, yeah. These people scare me, and that's what's great, you know Why? what I mean? You gotta be scared, you gotta be, you know, when Peter Weir came to my house and sat with me for Truman Show, I was terrified, I was like, I, you know, I, I mean, I know I, can, I have talent and all that, but, you know, this is a it's guy Peter that... Weir. Absolutely, and he came in with a book like this of creativity of things that he had written down and pictures he had cut out of magazines and things to inspire me and and I'm sitting there going wow he's really into this <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ask you about the Truman Show after this man on the moon it opens next week we'll be right back with Jim Carrey don't go away and now another Larry King live first we've had so many Jim Carrey has agreed to talk through his nose. <laughs> Would you try it? Uh, well, actually, I, I, that wasn't the purpose of this. That's, they're Why getting a little bit of noise from the shirt. So, so we're trying to get from a different angle, you know, <laughs> if we could. How's it and working? I think this picks it up, everything up nicely. Are we getting any wind? <laughs> I can just picture a guy, a little, couple of drinks, just turned on the set. Uh-huh. Right. This is it. Now, this Andy is the big interview. Andy would have done this, right? Of course. Okay, oh my now gosh. we'll fix it. Yeah, okay. Do we have a back on the shirt or something? There we go. Oh, it's perfect now. Okay. Do you like the... <laughs> Ask me you like the Truman Show the minute you read it? Uh, I love the Truman Show. The, the, the script for the Truman Show was one of the best things I ever read. It one was great phenomenal. Script ever done. Great, great, great. And what Peter Weir brought to it, too, was so cool because... It was kind of a po you know post-apocalyptic kind of dark. It was like a New York kind of setting and stuff. But Peter took it and put it in this kind of postcard, <laughs> psychotic postcard land, that made it so insidious, you know. And and that that was did magical thing to do with Did you think it was as well as it did? I mean, the audience really got it. Truman was a big movie, but it was really kind of hip. Well, I knew it would be a big first weekend. You knew that? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I know it was. I never count my chickens, but uh, but. I didn't know. I didn't know. It was a completely different animal for me, you know, and, and I, 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 as I said, I don't ever count on anything. I just go, whatever. Truly whatever disappointed about not getting nominated since everyone made it like a sure thing? Not for myself. I'm, I was disappointed that the movie was not better received and that Peter Weir wasn't because I think he had the most difficult job of any of those directors as far as interpreting a script. That was a very difficult thing to do, and what vantage point do you come from? And there's so many things going on. I think he did an amazing job with that, you know. And and it, I think it was a truly original, different movie. And and so you know that was disappointing that that wasn't recognized. But um, personally, and though, thin red line, come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Right there again, you know. No, it's, it's I fell asleep it's in front of the Mona Lisa, so. <laughs> but you weren't personally bugged. You had to be a little bugged.
Because everyone was saying, Jim, you're going to be nominated. No, you know, what I, honestly, I like, really? you know, it comes the time that the night before that, the, the nominations come out and everything, like, you're going to be up at five? You know, and it's, it's just like... <laughs> Were you? No. No. No, I wasn't. No, I, I, I waited for the call that never came. <laughs> Basically, I was, you know, it's that type of thing. You know, it's, it, I woke up at my normal time, and I knew that if I didn't get a call at 5 from everybody in the world, that it wasn't happening, and that, that well, was did okay. Did you find his work? Uh, did you look at yourself? It's just different. It's different. You but know, I not, like it. I think it's better great. than others. No, it's, it's not better than Ace. I don't think it's better than Ace. I think Ace is Ace was a, a really interesting piece of work, but uh, it's just different. It's just different. It comes from a different place, and that's okay too. How do you react with this, the bad side of fame, which is tabloids writing about you, mm -hmm. innuendo, gossip, yeah. which you didn't have back at the comedy club? And most of the time, it doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't no? doesn't really matter. No, I, I well, I've learned through experience that unless they, you know, call you something that uh, that uh, it might hurt somebody in your family, you know, or something like that. It, that's when it gets sticky. Is when when it affects the people around you more than yourself. Because I know, you know, it, you know, people pick up those magazines and they read them because it's like, you know, but they don't really believe it or care. You know, uh, they just you don't read think it the to kill time. around saying, "Did you hear what yeah. I wrote about yeah. Jim?" Yeah, Bat Boy found in cave. Run! <laughs> you know, um, we'll be right back with more of Jim Carrey, who is wonderful in Man on the Moon. It opens uncanny. I'm sorry. Just say we'll be right back. Go ahead, do it. Do it too. Woo! We'll be right back. We're back with Jim Carrey. Liar, liar, had to be fun. Liar, liar was a blast. And Are these well. socks too short? Well, normally Imagine. the rule on television is you wear high socks like this oh, really? so that your leg doesn't show. Oh, really? And of course, you're Jim Carrey. Hey, you're a rule breaker. I have a license to kill, baby. The leg shows. Maybe a little higher, huh? Look at that. Ooh, baby. I'm turning myself on now. I can't. I got to stop. You do like it, don't you? Hmm? You like touching your leg. The hair isn't bad. <laughs> what happened with Cable Guy? Uh... Why, I, I liked Cable Guy a lot. I still do I like Cable too, Guy. What went wrong? I was in the. You know what happened with Cable I was Guy? On the screen when you. That's right. When you that's walk right. in. Yeah, that's what happened. My. <laughs> <laughs> no laughing. <laughs> the kiss of death. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? What? Too dark? Uh, well, I guess so. But I think more than anything, it was a misconception of what it was going to be. You know, it's like they sold it like it was a light comedy that everybody, you know, found whole family, bring your whole family, see Jim jump off a tower in misery, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know. Well, it, that way of it said, oh, would they, did they it's sell hard it for wrong? a company to sit there and have this, like, big nugget of gold, you know, and, and then go over here and say, well, no, we're going to do this because that nugget of gold doesn't apply right now. You know, so uh, th that's what happened, and and um, and, uh, and nobody lost money on it, so it's cool. They didn't. No, not well, a cent. You you've never had a movie lose, huh? Oh <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure I have. I did some after-school specials in Canada. Oh. <laughs> really tanked. <laughs> yeah. When you, Jimmy meets the Beaver. Are you going to do more serious things? Uh, I'm basing it on Truman. Yeah, show. I just want to do everything. Do you like being known? Uh... I suppose somewhere in there I do, yeah. I could be cool and say, you know, it's a pain in the butt, this same thing. But I like that people like what I do. It's, it, that was the kernel of it to begin with, is that, you know, I wanted to be popular like my dad was. You know, he was the funniest guy ever. He was the kind of guy that you, you met him. circle. Oh, yeah, and you met him, you know, for five minutes, you felt like you knew him for 50 years, you know, and, and uh, I wanted that. Uh, I didn't know that the megalomania would <laughs> kick in and... <laughs> No, I, I just, I, I think that's part of it. It's part of it. I, I want people to like me. Sure, that, that's part of it. Do you know it's funny? Uh, this may be the most difficult thing in a movie. I mean, or not, when you stand up in front of an audience and you say something, mm -hmm. you know right away they yeah. laugh. Right. But in front of the camera where you're doing the 11th take, mm -hmm. the camera guys ain't laughing because they, they can't even laugh because mm -hmm. it's going to affect the scene. Do you know it's funny? Uh, I, I have a good sense of it most of the time. I'm wrong sometimes, for sure, uh, you know, but, uh, but I, I have a pretty good sense of it. Uh, I, 
I know timing wise and things like that. I know like when to cut, when not to cut. That's and natural, right? Things like Where that. It, can't it just comes through experience, I think, you know. And and there is a natural thing to it too. You have to, to know it in your living room room when you're a kid, you right. know. The audience is still surprised you though. Might you watch let's say this is keeping us apart. Okay. It's gonna happen. My, I knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. Might you watch mm -hmm. it's gonna happen. I know he's gonna <laughs> do this. Might you watch a film with an audience that say for the first time where they what they call that, where they test movies. Uh, where they laugh and part the testy you. thing? You didn't think they'd laugh. Or they don't laugh when you thought they'd laugh. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, you get the surprise laugh sometimes because you don't know how they're gonna react when it's all tied together and edited. You know, because they're, then they're, it's like a roller coaster and it, it picks up speed and things like that. So sometimes it, you get a great surprise. You get a laugh where you never thought you'd get one just because they're still rolling from the last thing or whatever it is. But uh, it's a fascinating process, the whole comedy. Other risk takers. Did you like, did you like Jerry Lewis? Uh, I love Jerry Lewis, yeah. I still like Jerry Lewis. He was... I haven't met him. You've never met Jerry Lewis? I hear he's trouble. Now, uh, you never met him? Never met him face to face. He said wonderful things about me, and sure I love Jerry Lewis. I think he, he did some of the most astounding uh, filmic clowning of anybody in history. And uh, I'm bleeding. We'll be right back with more of Jim Carrey. The film is Man on the Moon. Look. Look. Larry does this to me. I just pick my own flesh off. We'll be right back. We have another Larry King Live first. We expected a few with Jim Carrey. First ever to have a man talk through his nose. And now, on a talk show, a man injured. What happened? What happened? I don't know. I, I was uh, what? playing with my finger, and uh, I'm a bleeder. Oh, you are? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's thin. It's thin. <laughs> you're lucky. So. You're dry. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I just I picked something. I picked it. They always told me, leave your face alone, you know, that kind of Are thing. Are you a uh, hypochondriac? Do you... uh, a hypochondriac? Why do you say that? Do I look in. pale? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just... Uh, yeah. You seem to... Uh... All right, did you have fun doing Batman? Uh, I had a blast doing Batman. Yeah, I had such a great time with Joel Schumacher. It was great. Did you react poorly when Tommy Lee Jones said that he's an actor and you're a comic? <laughs> Does that bother you? Like, okay, well, you got a right to be kick my ass, you know. But uh, yeah, well, you know, it hurt. That was a, that was a hurtful thing because I love him as an actor. I think he's a great, great actor. Did you have a good and, time uh, working with him? Uh, I uh, did. He was difficult at that time. He was very difficult. Uh, but I think he just didn't want to be there. Or something, but, you know, whatever. That, you don't want to do something, right? Don't do it. Don't do it. But, well, he was but not Batman happy. was fun for you. I loved it. I had such a great time, and I went around my house twirling that stupid cane around and smashing into China and everything. Else. <laughs> <laughs> that cane flew everywhere, man. It was like that was wonderful. I I had a really good time. Before we talk a little more about Andy Kaufman, you sold Vanity Fair, and we know it's Vanity Fair, so yeah. it has to be true. All I want is one good woman. And I need to be a good man. I'm not the easiest person. Is that still true? One good woman? Absolutely. You can't find one good woman? I'm working on it. Are you there? I may be there. Why do you think people like to read bad things about famous people? Because I don't. I like to read good things about it. That's the truth. I want to see happiness for everybody. Uh, I, think, I, think it's, uh, I think it's fun. You know, it's fun to see the, the people who are supposed to have it all have a, have a, a bad day. Or, or to uh, have dysfunctional behavior or whatever it is. It's, 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 it's in, in our deep recesses somewhere, we enjoy that, you know, and... Uh, Especially like when people with a lot of money or people have it better than Sure, me. sure. It's, it's, you know, it, I, don't, I try not to indulge in that too much, but, uh, but it, you know, I, I can't help but turn it off, or, but, you know, keep it on when it comes on the TV, gossip stuff or anything like that. It's, 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 it's hard to stop, you know, or in a conversation at a party or something, you, you, it's easy, you know what I mean? It's easy. It's not like you don't pick up, you know, Dostoevsky, you, you, you know, you, you just want to see work. who's biting it this week, you know what I mean? <laughs> who's losing have to work. control, you know? You don't have to work. You don't have to work at it at all. I am bleeding like What's a next? Pig. Where? Uh, oh, it's just, that it's isn't even a cut. It's, it's serious to me. It's a precious commodity, this, this, this. plasma. <laughs> What's your next film? 
Uh, well, I'm doing The Grinch right now. Grinch Who Stole Christmas with Ron Howard. It's so much fun. Oh, wow. Oh, it's a blast. I, it's, it's like a dream come true, because I watch it every year of my life, you know, growing up. Every Christmas time, it wasn't Christmas without Ron directing? Yeah. And in it, or just directing? No, he's directing. He, he, he must be great to work with. Oh, he's incredible. Actors what a director. sweet guy, and really easy to push around. And you got one, no. co and you got one uh, coming out, though. Done, right? Uh, yeah, me, myself, and Irene. You play person with split personality? Uh, yes, I do. I do that a lot. You know, it, that seems duck soup to you. You could have phoned that in. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun movie for me, you know, just to have fun, you know, and I, that was a blast. And, and How do you uh, think Man on the Moon's going to do? Really? You know, it's, it's odd. It's, it's a strange one to kind of pin down, but uh, I, hope it, I hope it does great, obviously. But, but uh, I'm getting a, a, a strange reaction. Like, no, people, people that don't know Andy Kaufman who have seen the movie think it's a good movie and a good story about a great and creative person. You know, period, whether they know him or not. It's still funny routines and fun, fun oh, stuff and an interesting human being. We'll be back with our yeah. remaining moments with Jim Carrey. Who can tell what might happen? In the, I think we have about five or six minutes left. Don't go away. We mentioned it earlier. Yeah. Dumb and Dumber, one of your favorites. Oh, I think we Dumb and Dumber that is really funny. That was yeah. a dumb, 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 fun and dumb movie. movie. Just pure fun. Absolutely, I loved it. So, Jim. Yes. As this movie is about to open, yeah. another page in this chapter. By the way, all riding on this one. You do, you do two movies a year. Yeah, about that. Why Something do you like work that? so much? A man you think that's a lot? Isn't it a lot? Most suppose it's one a year. Isn't really? It? Huh. Well, you know, I, I don't know. I, Do I think like that's not that much, actually. No? No, Hanks does ten, doesn't he? Yeah, I guess he does. <laughs> no. Would you like to do voiceover in a cartoon? Uh, yeah, as long as they didn't come up with this, this you know, like, like uh, oh, we're all doing it for fun <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> you know, I think that's kind of bogus. You know? So you wouldn't have done Toy Story? I, oh, absolutely I would do Toy Story, yeah. Wouldn't or would? Would have, yes, absolutely. Because the story's good. But there's a kind of like a little business thing going on out there that, that, that uh, you know, people make gigantic amounts of money from these movies and, and somehow convince all these people to do it for free. <laughs> because it's for kids. <laughs> You know, kind of thing, and they get you in there, and you, you, with the good intentions, and but they're they're you know cleaning up. You Are know? you accessible? Do you like interviewing? Do you like this? Can I tell you honestly? Yeah, please. Uh, I'd rather be with my girl, but I I, I I see it as a good thing. I I'm, I'm really happy to do it with you. I, I've been wanting well, to do it for a long time. Very much, but some people don't, they're uncomfortable with it. It's just, the, it, it, you know what it is? It's, you, you can only do so many without thinking that your story is played out. You know? Yeah, have a, did I say this? Oh, man, who did I say it to? And how many times have I said it? And so you try to do it different, but, but you just don't feel that interesting all the time, you know? Can you see this thing? Boy, that's really... Okay, uh, you, you just... The, How's the shooting? We have a few minutes left. How's the shooting of the Grinch going? So good. It's so much fun. It's like a Wizard of Oz or something. So how you know, are we, cha so are we much... changing it? Oh, sure. Yeah. The Grinch is the nice guy. The Who's are evil. No. <laughs> um, no, I... Uh, it's going to... Well, obviously, we had to expand on it. It has to move um, yeah. a little bit more. And, and, uh, and, and, you know, Ron did a great job with you it. You like work, know. huh? I love work. I love work. I love what I do. I'm so lucky. You know, and, and, uh, uh, you want to finish like that? We're yeah. about to finish. Oh, are we really? Yeah. Well, that's appropriate. Then, Thank you, yeah, Jim. let's go out on that. Oh, I thought you said, let's go out. <laughs> <laughs> let's go out, period. Z will and not like tip that. a few. Come on. You want to hit it? I'm ready, man. Hit the bars? Oh, jeez. It's let's junk go. Up, man. Let's go. I I'm tired of myself already. Moon. Man on the moon. <laughs> it opens one week from tonight. Wide. <laughs> I had to see what he saw in him, you know? I, <laughs> the forehead? Man, it's beautiful. Was it on the lips? Yes. I don't know. I don't watch TV. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> Say good night. Good night. Good night. Jim Carrey. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Happy holidays. Don't go away. <laughs> <laughs>